Good morning. The year at DePauw has a certain rhythm. It has a beginning, much that happens in the middle, and then it has a big ceremonial end. Much of this rhythm of the year would be completely familiar to all of you, no matter when you graduated. Some of it, of course, is quite new. DePauw's year now begins with the opening day walk. This is a new tradition, just about seven years old. We gather up all the incoming freshmen, we now call them first years, and we march them behind bagpipers down the new Anderson Street, through alma mater gates in front of East College, and onto the campus grounds. It's their first day of college, and we want to mark this moment with a sense of occasion. As we begin the walk by East College, the bells of that building begin to ring, as do the bells of all the churches in the town. This is a tribute to that day in 1834 when Greencastle learned it had won the right to build the Methodist College in the town. And on that day in celebration, the four churches that were in existence rang the bells when they heard the news. At this point in the march, the freshmen are very quiet. They don't actually have a category in their mind to put this in, so they just take it in just for a little while. But as it has now become a new tradition on that day, as the first years march onto and through the campus, an extraordinary number of upperclassmen gather to cheer them on. It's the upper class students who are loud and boisterous that day. You see, over the past few years, the students have been coming earlier and earlier each year to DePauw. They now arrive the week before classes, ostensibly to organize their houses and buy their books and get ready for classes. Yeah. But no. <laughs> But mostly they just want to be back. And so the upperclassmen are here for days before the official start of school. And on that first day for the freshmen, they're all on the lawns or lining the paths of what has now become the traditional route through the campus. We bring the students, we bring the new students around East College and we come on to Burkhart Walk, what many of you knew as College Street, which is now closed to cars and serves as a central walkway through the heart of the campus. We then walk in front of Phi this is the part of the walk where I try to look presidential, as if I'm only having deep and serious thoughts. What I'm really doing is saying to myself, dear God, I hope the Phi Sides behave. <laughs> if they do, I send them Marvin garlic cheeseburgers to them that night, which is another new tradition. <laughs> and they did it again this year, so it's, we're, we're seven for seven. We then bring the freshmen into the Great Hall of the Green Performing Arts Center, where the DePauw faculty is waiting in full academic regalia. The faculty form two lines, and the new students walk between them as the faculty clap in greeting. The stu new students are a bit stunned and they're awed. This is the exact first moment they really think of themselves as college students. They look remarkably young and remarkably excited and remarkably scared. Possibility and adventure is literally washing over them and they don't quite know what to do with all of that. So we welcome the new class and the new academic year begins and they begin their DePaul lives. Later that afternoon, after all the speeches are over, we ask the parents to leave the campus. If we didn't ask them to leave, quite a number of parents would stay at DePaul for days, even weeks. <laughs> You see, the parents seem to think it takes a very long time to make their children's dorm rooms nice. <laughs> they buy their sons and daughters comforters and curtains. They buy chalkboards and extension cords. They buy extra hangers and posters and area rugs. The fathers make diagrams about how the room should be arranged. <laughs> they measure things. The students pretend to listen to their parents, but they're actually completely mortified by all this arranging. <laughs> As it turns out, the girls' rooms will stay the way their parents arranged them till about mid-October. The boys' rooms are essentially an unrecognizable mess by the very first evening. <laughs> In a day or two after orientation, the academic year truly begins. The students settle into their classes and their lives. During the day, they walk to classes on the same paths you walked, mostly into buildings familiar to you. By October, the campus has developed its deeper rhythms. Asbury and Harrison Halls are full. Language instruction happens in East College. Science labs still happen in the early afternoons. At three, the School of Music is loud with ensembles. Later in the afternoon, a great number of students are on the west side of campus practicing soccer, field hockey, or football, and the college feels like a college. 
What is new, though, is that no matter what is happening, the students are looking at their phones constantly. <laughs> you see, if it doesn't happen on their phones, it doesn't happen. <laughs> I could walk across the campus only wearing socks with my ears bleeding, and until someone takes a picture and posts it, it didn't happen. <laughs> this is so true. You know, I'm just going to go off script here for a bit. The only people they talk to is their moms. If they're on their phone, you say, who are you talking to? My mom. Which is, you know, <laughs> I spent most of my college years not talking to my mom, so this is a, this is a new tradition. So anyway, eventually DePauw students make it through to Thanksgiving, where they all get in their cars and they go to their friends' homes in St. Louis, Indianapolis, or Chicago. They come back from Thanksgiving, study nonstop for three weeks, and then they go home completely exhausted after exams. At home on winter break, they sleep for four days straight. Then they get on their phones to text all their friends about how boring home is and how much they miss campus and how they need to see each other immediately. <laughs> Spring semester follows much the same course with the added dr drama of fraternity and sorority rush and recruiting for those who choose this route. By spring, the seniors are starting to get a little bit nostalgic, the juniors are feeling very grown up, and the freshmen are just stunned that one year of college is going by so fast. By late spring, the seniors finish up their big projects, the younger students plan their winter term trips, and the faculty, of course, go to meetings and meetings and form committees. True. <laughs> commencement weekend then comes up fast. And while commencement ceremonies are very traditional and familiar to you all, there are new traditions that now mark the end of our year. We now have a very large baccalaureate service a day before graduation with music and readings. And the night before commencement, we light up all the trees around East College. We place, place a very large orchestra on the steps of Emerson Hall, and we have a large lawn party called DePaul Under the Stars. There are champagne fountains, and big band music fills the lawns. Everyone believes themselves to be in a movie, the best movie they've ever been in. The night, DePaul Under the Stars, the campus looks beautiful, and East College looks particularly bright. The following morning, commencement morning, has the same electric buoyancy that you would all recognize and remember. The ceremonies happen, and the students are a confusing mixture of happy and sad. And they have their pictures taken, and they feel both silly and proud in their robes. And then suddenly, the station wagons and SUVs fill up, and the cars pull away. And that night, East College overlooks a quiet campus. So much is new about DePaul, and so much is changing. And we look forward to a future that promises so many other changes. But the rhythm of our years still holds, and a college marches toward what will be soon begin the beginning of its third century. And soon the class of 2019, 630 smart, social young people from Ohio and France, Colorado and Korea will take their first walk on this campus. And like you on that day, they will be excited and they will be scared. And like you on that day, they will think four years last forever. You know, we go through life and we never know what we need. And we have our seasons and we have our rhythms, but we always need some form of magic and we need magic places. And this is one of those places. And that's, well, I could never get through this speech, I tell you. <laughs> and it's gonna get worse in just a bit, so hang in there. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, that's right. I'm just here to tell you, because it's really interesting. I always find myself in DePaul meetings where I'm the one non-DePaul graduate. And so in some ways, one of my jobs is to tell you what you are and to tell you what this place is. And this is a magic place. It's a special place. It's an important place. And you need to know that, because I came here and saw that. And one of my jobs was to tell you that. So I'm telling you that right now. This is a special place. So now it's going to get really hard because I'm going to do something which is a wonderful tradition, and that is the charge to the senior class. Because when you graduated, the president gave you a charge. This is a charge that's been read to every graduating class since 1870. So if you'll indulge me, I'm going to charge you yet again because when you came here and when you left, this school called upon you to do certain things. So I may ask every DePaul graduate to please stand. And here's the charge. Young men and women, 
You have entered into a noble inheritance. You are heirs of all the past. Prophets and sages, scholars and scientists, poets and public servants have wrought with patience and sought truth. And the abundant fruit of their toil is now yours. It is yours to use, it is yours to increase, and it is yours to bequeath to your successors. The university charges you to be strong, to acquit yourselves with integrity, and to be loyal to your highest ideals. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, always think of these things. Dear alumni, I am honored to be with you. I am honored by your love for this place, and I will take care of your school. Thank you. <laughs>